Hey makeup friends, today we're gonna talk some trash. Yes, I'm gonna be doing an empties video. I have not done one in a very long time. I actually can't remember the last time I did do one, so let's change that. Let's do one now, let's go. As always, I wanna welcome you back to my channel, or if you are new here, then hello and welcome. My name is Kara, and on my channel, we like to mix beauty, brains, and the occasional F-bomb. Really quickly, if the makeup's looking familiar, I did wear this in a previous video, or possibly a future video. I'm not sure which one's gonna go up next, but at any rate, I did make some changes between the other video and this one. Suffice it to say, I have a mix of the Ninhydrin palette and the Plain Jane palette, both of them from Adept Cosmetics, on my eyes. And on my lips, I have Velvet Teddy from MAC, topped with the Tower 28 gloss in the shade Cashew. Let's dive into the video. So I do have a bit of a mixed bag here. There are some makeup products, some skincare, hair care, and some other random items. So what I suggest we do is we start with the random items and move towards the makeup items. So first up, I used up a package of bath bombs, and frankly, I've probably used up two or three at this point, and I have repurchased them over and over again, and I do have an unopened package upstairs in our bathroom. So these ones are from Calgon. They're in the scent Lavender and Honey. It comes in a package of eight, and you can get them on sale for about six or seven dollars at Shoppers Drug Mart. And I just, I really like the price point on them. And while I do enjoy the bath bombs from Lush and various other places like that, they carry a fairly hefty price tag. Some of them can get up to nine or $10 per bath bomb. And it's just a little hefty when you think about it. So I much prefer this price point. And also the kids enjoy having them in their bath as well. And I don't mind putting a $2 bath bomb in with the kids. So this is just one that I always have a bag on hand because at least the kids and I use them. Barry's not so much with the whole soaking in the tub thing. He's much more of a shower guy, big burly man, but the three of us really enjoy these. Next up in the somewhat random category is this here. This is the Pure Castile Soap from Dr. Bronner. This one is in the scent Citrus, and I have repurchased it just in a different scent. Almond, sweet almond, something to do with almonds, and it's divine. I prefer the almond to the citrus, but what I like to use this for is washing my makeup brushes. I just find that it cuts through all of the oils that are in the brushes, especially foundation brushes and things of that sort, and it really does help to get them very clean without leaving any sort of residue on the bristles. It rinses away very easily as well and really just helps to make the process of cleaning my brushes just that much faster. And you do get quite a bit in here and a little goes a long way. So this is one that I can see myself repurchasing over and over again because I do find that it does a great job at cleaning my brushes. I've got a hair care product as well and it's from The Body Shop. This is the Banana Truly Nourishing Hair Mask for normal to dry hair. It just comes in a little vat like so. Ew, really old shower water. Put the lid back on that. It has a really nice scent to it. It is very much banana scented, but without being cloying or too heavy. This is the second container that I've gone through. I haven't repurchased it again because I am trying out different hair masks at this point. It is one that I can see myself going back to, but I just haven't repurchased it at this point. I've used up this bottle of Bioderma Micellar Water and I did repurchase it. The only difference between them being the applicator or the nozzle on them and frankly, I prefer the little squeeze bottle function than this one. This is one where you like press it down and it just shoots up. I just find that this is a little bit more precise than this. This always like there's some like random rogue stream of micellar water that shoots out and like gets me in the eye or gets all over the wall. This one's just a lot easier to deal with, but regardless, they're the exact same product and I really do like it for what it is. I mean, I don't wash my face using micellar water, but it's nice to have on hand, especially down here in my makeup room. So quick touch-ups and things of that sort, I just reach for this. I have two skincare items to talk about, and the first one is from the brand Peace Out. These are the Peace Out Wrinkles, and I just have to read what they are because there's no way I'll ever remember all these words. It came with six anti-wrinkle dissolving microneedling patches with retinol and peptides. So it says on the back, Time machines aren't real, but these anti-wrinkle microneedling patches are, and they're just as good. No, 
they're not, at least not on a one pack basis. So the patches came and they're like yay big, like they were tiny. So I kind of had to just like pick the worst spot of my wrinkle and slap it on there. And you're supposed to use these two times a week for at least two weeks in order to see results. So the fact that there's only six in there to begin with, like you can't just stick them all over your face or else you're not gonna have enough to use even for a one week dosage. So unless you're gonna like invest a ton of money and buy a whole whack of these packs, I just, I didn't see any difference. I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't get on board with it. And then because you're supposed to wear them overnight, I did, but then I would wake up in the morning and at least one of them would be missing. So I don't even know how long they were on my face. So that could play into why I didn't get the results that they promised but it certainly is no time machine. And I just think it's a bit gimmicky, to be honest. I'm sorry, peace out. I just didn't see any results with this whatsoever. And it's not something that I would repurchase. Likewise, I would not repurchase this item. This is from Bosha and it's the Sake Cleansing Water. It's a no rinse makeup remover and cleanser. So basically along the lines of a micellar water, except it stings the ever living shit out of your eyeballs. So no thank you. I did manage to use, well, if I'm being perfectly honest, I managed to use most of it. I think I got it down to about here and then just dumped it out and put it in this empties because I just could not continually do that to myself because it stung like a mother. And while it did remove my makeup, so does frankly water and a makeup eraser. So does micellar water. So does eye makeup remover. So do so many other things that are on the market that don't hurt when you use them. I just couldn't do it with this anymore and so I gave up and I will never repurchase it because it hurt and I don't like my eyeballs hurting. And on that note, let's move over to makeup. So first up are two different liquid eyeliners. One is the Pretty Easy Liner from Clinique and the other is the Liquid Liner from ABH. I really do love this liquid liner. I have not repurchased it though because I did pick up the Bite Beauty Upswing Liner and it reminds me very, very much of this one. So I don't really feel the need to go out and repurchase this at this time. It's a nice felt tip applicator, very precise. It never pilled up at the end or split or did anything that sometimes felt tips can do. It dries fully matte, it dries very quickly, it doesn't crack, it doesn't flake. It's a great liner. Likewise, we have the Pretty Easy Liner from Clinique. This one is in the shade Brown and I have repurchased it. This one has an actual brush tip applicator and it has the right balance of being flexible enough that it doesn't like get stabby on the eyes, but still having enough rigidity to it that you can get a lot of precision and it's not just like bending all over the place. Now, while I can't say that the Pretty Easy Liner is my favorite of the liquid liners, it is a very good one and it is offered in brown, whereas Bite and ABH are not. On an everyday basis, this just produces a really nice soft line on the eyes. It deepens up the lash line without being really obvious about it. So it's nice to have a brown option in my collection of liquid liners and you really can't go wrong with this one. It's just that it's not my absolute favorite formula. It's good, it's just not amazing. Okay, let's move on. Speaking of good, but like nothing to write home about, there's this setting spray here from NYX. This is the Bear With Me Prime Set and Refresh Spray. You can see I used it all up, but I haven't repurchased it. It really didn't make any sort of lasting impression on me one way or the other. It's not bad, it's not great. It didn't really do anything transformative to my makeup or to my skin. It's just a setting spray. It's not bad, but it didn't really do anything amazing for me and that's why I haven't repurchased it. Really, really quickly, I finished up a lip balm, which was part of the collaboration between Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. Would I repurchase it if it was available for purchase? No. All right, let's head back to the drugstore and talk about this one from L'Oreal. This is the True Match Lumi Glotion and I have it in the shade 902 Light Glow. I don't really use it as a liquid highlighter, but I really do like it as a primer. And if you like the look of the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury, but you kind of choke at the price point, this might be a really good option to look at. I can't say that they're exact dupes and frankly, I think this one is a little bit thicker in consistency than the one from Charlotte Tilbury, but for the overall effect, it's very, very similar. So again, if you're looking for a more budget-friendly option, this is one I would recommend. 
I've also finished out my clean canvas base from Gerard Cosmetics, which I had in the shade medium. I do have it in light as well, so that's the one that I'll likely be working on next, but I just finished this up today, so I'm very excited about that. There is still a little bit left in there, but by this point it's quite dry, so I'm just gonna call it quits on this and say that it's done. I really like this eye primer. There is a little bit of a learning curve to it because a little goes a very long way, but once you figure out how to apply it and blend it out, it's fantastic. It really does help the shadows with their longevity and it does produce a nice clean canvas as the name would suggest. There's a lot of like darkness around my eyes to begin with and this just really helps to just erase all of that. It acts kind of like a concealer for my eyelids. I really like this product too on days where I just want to wear like mascara or just throw a little bit of bronzer in the crease and be done with it. This just again blanks out that discoloration which frankly makes me feel like I look about 15 years younger. So I like it for that as well but overall this is definitely one that I would pick up again. Now I do want to put a little caveat in there that I am on the Gerard Cosmetics PR team and I do have an affiliate code with them so I am lucky enough to get this in PR which I'm very very grateful for but even if I did not receive it in PR I would purchase it with my own money because I really do like this product. Does anybody else get really sad when they use up like a wildly expensive item? Because I'm just a wee bit heartbroken. Little proud, little heartbroken. This is the Dior Air Flash Foundation. I have it in shade 201. And if you haven't seen it, it's basically an aerosolized uh, foundation, which I wasn't quite sure how to use it, but if you just spray it on your brush and then apply it to your face, it is beautiful. It just looks so natural and effortless on the skin, and yet it does provide more coverage than what you would expect from an aerosolized makeup product. I really like this. I'm very tempted to repurchase it, except I have a lot of foundations right now. I know I love it. I like trying new formulas out. So I'm gonna hold off on buying it for now, but it's definitely on my list of things to be repurchased at some point. I might cash in some Shoppers Drug Mart points and pick it up during their next like redemption event. But for right now, I don't have a need for it, but I kind of want it because I love it. Okay, we've got one more item and that one is from Cheekbone Beauty. And this is a Canadian brand based out of St. Catharines, Ontario, my hometown. And this is their brow product. It is called, what is it called? I don't know, brow, I just saw the totally wrong word. It's brow fix. Fix isn't the F word I saw, brow fix. And I have it in shade five brunette. Oh my goodness, let's move on. It's got a really weird applicator and yet it is far more precise than you would think it's going to be. I was not sure at first that I was gonna like that because it's just so stubby and nubby. I didn't think I'd be able to get a lot of precision out of it. And yet it's not a problem at all. It fits in right where you need it to. You can angle it around and get into those like smaller areas of your brows. It produces a really nice effect on the brows. Nothing crunchy, but it has a good amount of hold. It's a nice balance for me. I do have some products currently in my collection that just don't have enough hold and some that have way too much and this hits the sweet spot. This is definitely one that I would consider repurchasing after I make my way through all these other ones that I have, such as they are, uh, but this is one that I've really enjoyed using, and overall, Cheekbone is a brand that I've really been enjoying, and I have made a purchase from them very recently. I do have my shipping notification, and when those items arrive, I do intend to do a fully dedicated video to Cheekbone, because I really think more people need to know about this brand. All right, with all of that said, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Those are my empties for now. Who knows, it might take me another six or eight months before I have enough empties amassed to do another one of these videos, but when I was going through all of my empties, I have a lot of sample empties. And recently I did a video talking about samples that made me buy the full size. And I got the idea of maybe doing a video where I talk about samples that turned me off of buying the full size. So if that's something that you're interested in, either let me know in the comments below or give the video a thumbs up or something like that, just so that I can gauge the interest in that. But at any rate, for now, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you in my next one. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.